Hi everyone and welcome back to another healthy keto eating show. This is my recipe from Thursday's slideshow. We got some scripture reading and another story, so come on back. everyone it's so great to see you and great to be back in doing another healthy keto eating show i always love doing these with you guys now i always make these on thursday and then i put the slideshow up on thursday since it's such a small little clip that it loads pretty fast and then i eat it on that day so i'm eating it right in the day that i put up the slideshow just so i can taste it and let you guys know how i feel about it and you know what the recipe tastes like and all of that so and then you guys get it on saturday so today would be saturday for you guys when you see this video but i always do that that way i can get two videos done in one now i have a new setup here i got a new tripod um i normally do my tripod separate with the camera and then um my ring light well i bought this one has the ring light right around it so hopefully you guys can see me really good now and everything's set up better and hopefully you know it all comes through good it looks good to me the lighting looks good hopefully the lighting isn't uh, too bright for you guys it looks like it's okay to me but yeah i really like it i like how the ring light is around it now which is going to be great when i start doing the nail art and everything because sometimes the lighting just doesn't come in right doesn't pick it up right but being right over your camera that's a great idea so i really love it so let's hope that this video turns out great for you guys um but anyways uh what we're having is that like i said the slideshow one that i did it is the cold shrimp cocktail salad i made a noodle salad i'm excited about that to try it and of course, I do one meal a day. If you're new to my channel, we'll start off right there is the red subscribe button. Please subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell so you're notified of all of my new uploads. Share around my channel so I can grow bigger and help many people with ketogenic, with their faith, with cleaning, with nails, with fashion. I have a multi-channel. And if you enjoyed this video, please shoot me a thumbs up. That makes me smile and it definitely is, you know, proves and shows me if you guys are enjoying these videos when I see the thumbs up. All right. Now, if you are new, again, I've been ketogenic almost five years. This November 4th will be five years. My ketoversity is coming up that I've been ketogenic for five years. In the short 15 months, I lost over 150 pounds and was pretty happy right there. I was going to stay there at a goal weight of around, um, I think it was like about, 160 right there about 155 to 160 but then i decided realistically i want to get to a better weight since i'm only five foot two and a half to five three i want to be a better weight for me so i had gotten all the way down into like the 120s i was 128 to like 135 today i range between 135 and 140 because i do some resistant and stuff some exercising so i've gained a little bit of muscle but i went from a size 24 jean all the way down to a size 2 i started right before my 40th birthday i will be 45 in december december 14th i'll be 45 years of age um but it was right before my 40th birthday when i started and like i said i lost all of that weight in 15 months and then a little bit more, I wanted to lose a little bit more, so I would say a total of 18 months total, I got to a goal weight, a realistic goal weight, a perfect BMI in 18 months of 128 to 135, and that's basically where I range, right around 135. Um, but now, since a little bit of resistance, I'll go from 135 to 140, which is still great, but I just can't believe I wear a size two, you guys, a size two to four, just unbelievable at my age. That's smaller than I was even when I was younger, and I was never a heavy child. I didn't gain my weight till after I got pregnant with my son. I developed a heart condition uh, that had added lots of weight on me. There was a lot of water weight and stuff. I got what was called postpartum cardiomyopathy, and I was only 21 years old. I was 22 when I had him. I had the heart of an 83-year-old after I had him. was told I couldn't have any more children. That was it. I was so young, and I was almost 300 pounds when I delivered him so I needed to really you know think about this and try to lose weight I tried different diets lost a little bit of weight throughout a 16 year period um, was on tons of medication things were just getting worse I had not only the heart condition but I had um, high blood pressure high triglycerides high uh, sugar levels that were turning into pre I was pre-diabetic um, high um, uh, let's see I said the high blood pressure, high triglycerides, high cholesterol, okay, and then that, and then I had HPV, PCOS, 
um, stomach gurge, I had uh, acid reflux, I had um, asthma, and pretty much, there was a few other things, but pretty much I have cured everything. The heart is almost back to normal. The highest I could get it to then was around 25%. Right now I sit at almost 50, and 50 is pretty normal for you guys. I'm between 43 and 45 for my percentage of my ejection fraction is what it's called. It was the upper left ventricle that enlarged by double the size, and it was only functioning at 8%. I had the heart of an 83-year-old at 22 years of age. And then, of course, I was on all these meds and just kind of kept me afloat. But yeah, I was not doing good at all, you guys. I was getting severe palpitations, didn't feel good, couldn't walk, couldn't breathe. I was getting sick two, three times a year with, um, I had I was diagnosed with COPD, but the chronic bronchitis one. So I was getting bronchitis really bad. I, was, I would be sick for six to eight weeks and all that. I decided one day, I was watching my son lose weight, my brother, I thought, I'm going to do this. And so I started doing it and I had pure success. It was the first diet that ever worked. And now I've been maintaining that weight out for over three years, you guys. And I um, always did intermittent fasting, but I didn't do it till I was about two months in the ketogenic way of life. I wanted to get good and fat adapted. So um, about two months in, I started doing 16 hour fasting. So I had a 16 hour window where I didn't eat or eight hour window where I ate. I ate like two meals and a small snack, okay? I started at about 1800 calories, worked my way down, um, got all the way down to the very end when I was losing like the last 10 pounds. I was doing about eight to a thousand calories in one meal. I was doing one meal a day then. And within just a few months working with the doctor, I do have a keto doctor, a keto nutritionist, two keto nutritionists, my brother who does this as a job and all the studying I did myself. So when I bring it to you, I'm bringing this to you through, you know, professional people that helped me through this. And when I dropped that low in calories, I was being, you know, uh, this through professionals. So just don't go and do this, you guys, you know, talk to your doctor and all of that. The ketogenics very safe, but you know, just get, you know, do your research. Everybody do their own research. I am not a doctor nor a nutritionist, but I eliminated everything out of my life. I am now on just two medications for the heart right now, which is a very low dose. And the doctor doesn't even know if I even need that, but he said, they're so low. Let's just keep you on it just to make sure everything maintains. We'll check you again in a couple years. Well, we're at the time now to get it checked again. So we're going to get it checked out. He checks it about every two years. So we're going to check it out. But I always did intermittent fasting. The lowest I, or lowest I did was 16. That's what they recommend. Then I did like 18 and 20 hours. Um, I've done even alternate day where I went 40 hours um, throughout after I hit maintenance mode. I've always done that, but I, you know, in a different calorie deficit, I'm definitely up higher now. I do 15 to 1800 calories. Um, now, since this pandemic hit in March, I decided to go back to one meal a day. I was doing two meals a day. I was doing the warrior diet where I had 20 hours where I fasted, four hours where I ate. But now I'm doing 24 hour fasting since March. I do it six days a week, one day a week, I do the warrior. I do 20 hour, I have a four hour window where I eat and then I go back to it for six days, you know, six days um, again in a row. But anyways, so I eat all of my calories now in one meal. I just wanna stay at my most optimal health uh, since this pandemic hit and all of that, just wanna be as healthy as I can. So that's why I'm doing that. But it doesn't mean you guys have to do that. Just if you're first starting off, you know, just get good and fat adapted first before you start incorporating intermittent fasting, but incorporate it when you can because it goes hand in hand with keto. It's so good for you. So for my one meal today, I'm doing um, a serving of this. Now I called this one two servings. It could definitely be four, uh, but since I only do one meal, I split it between me and my husband. So I got one serving of that. The whole pan was 17, uh, 17 and a half net carbs, I believe, or 17 carbs. So I've got um, eight, like, around eight, eight and a half net carbs here. But the total amount with the food I have here, I have, uh, well, I'll go over it with you. So I have, we got eight, and then I have a half of a cucumber peeled and some ranch dressing. I'm just a serving of ranch dressing, pink salt and pepper. Um, so it would be eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Um, the yogurt, 13, 14, 15, with the serving of nuts would be 16. I've got pecans on there for the good heart, healthy fat. Some ready whip I'm going to put on it. So then it would be, let's see, what I say? 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, uh, 17. We've got two of these. That makes it 19 or a half. And then I am going to have this. And this is one. So it's exactly 20 net carbs. Actually, this was uh, 19. And then with the um, sugar-free creamer, a serving of sugar-free chocolate creamer, the powder one, um, makes it exactly 20. But I'm gonna have this because I just need a little extra fat. This wasn't a very high fat meal and I'm looking around going, I need some more high fat. 
need to go grocery shopping again. Don't, didn't have a lot of super high fat foods in the house. Um, and I thought when I made this, it was pretty low fat. So when we needed to add some extra fat and definitely would be in that. And this is only a one net carb. I showed this when I showed my video when I did my treat day video. So I'm going to have that and enjoy that. We got the heart healthy fat with the nuts. Uh, of course, oh, and I have MCT oil in here. I forgot to tell you guys that I have MCT oil in here, which also is good heart healthy fat because I need the fats. And then of course the ranch dressing, there would be some fat and that's about it. This would be more low fat. And of course the cucumbers are low fat and the mozzarella cheese is lower. So, but anyways, that's my one meal of the day that I'm having for today. And I'm excited to try this. Um, I did, like I said, a shrimp cocktail. Now I have showed you guys, I've done a video on a shrimp cocktail sauce for having cold shrimp and I'm doing it, a, you know, a keto way. Um, I do it with, um, well, you would have seen the slideshow, but if you didn't, it was just sugar-free ketchup, horseradish, but done in the, the pieces of horseradish, not the, the sauce, the horseradish pieces that you get fresh, you know, in the, in the jar, and then hot sauce and um, lemon juice, just the real lemon juice that you buy in those bottles, and that's how you make it, and then I just put some salt and pepper, but I did a... Um, Shrimp cocktail noodle dish is what I got here. So we've got those shirataki noodles. I did the fettuccine ones. And then I've got some green onion. And then, of course, the, sh the cold shrimp with the shrimp, you know, cocktail sauce on it. The whole thing, the whole recipe is in slideshow on uh, Thursday. So I'll revert back to that. I will also link it down in this box, all the ingredients and how to make it. Just this part. All this stuff is extra because I do one meal. So, but anyways... How are all of you guys doing? I hope all of you guys are staying safe, happy, and healthy, leaning on Jesus, trusting him, and keeping your faith. It's important. Before we eat, we're going to go ahead and read our words of Jesus for women. By the way, if you do need any extra help, I link my email down below. I have helped over 3,000 people get their life back through the professional help that I got doing this. I have helped a lot of people as well, over 3,000, and I just keep going and going. So if you need me extra help, I do have to ask some personal questions to set you up on a macro plan. Send me an email. It's right down below my email, right in my information box. So, and definitely shoot me some messages. I love to read the messages. I love them. I don't get back immediately, but I will get back to you guys. I just kind of let it go for about a week, and then I, I read all the comments. I mean, I read them. If it's anything you're asking me, I'm going to answer back immediately. But if it's just, you know, saying something nice or whatever, I read them, and I just get back later. But yeah, so if you need help, go ahead and send me an email. I know recently I just helped another person with that. Uh, good luck with that journey. So, yeah, I'm just excited. I love to help people. I get such a, a high off of, you know, just knowing I'm helping people get their life back. I know where I was. I was in a dark place at one moment in my life and I was very unhealthy. Did, well, definitely was not going to live a long life, not with a bad heart like I had and how obese I was almost 40 years old. And now I feel better than when I was 16. So I'd love for all you guys to feel the same way. All right, we are on family ties. That light is kind of bright for me. Like when I look down at the food, like it's almost like I can't see it. So I hope I can read this okay. Because that light, that ring light around that is pretty bright. Um, this is Matthew... Uh, 1250. Whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. And it goes on to say, there is no doubt that Jesus loved his mother and his brothers. He talked about love all the time. But can you see the importance of this statement? Those who obey God and do what he instructs are closer than actual family. Remember though, that it is, I mean, remember though, that it isn't just doing that makes you family of Jesus. It is also being, which means resting in him and trusting him, really knowing him. <clears throat> and I've talked to you guys a lot telling you, get that personal relationship with Jesus. Spend that alone quality of time with, you know, alone quality time with him, alone in a room, reading his scriptures, praying to him, talking to him. Get that personal relationship with him. That's the only way to get to God is through him, trusting that he died on the cross, you know, having that faith and believing in him and get a personal relationship with him. And that's what he's saying here, trusting him, resting in him and trusting him, really knowing him, really know the Lord. Down below it says, Dear Father, I understand that you, or I understand that just reading your word and even praying to you isn't enough. I long to be with you to sense your spirit dwelling in me. I long to be um, ex, um, ex, extravagantly, I long to be so extravagantly yours that my thoughts and actions flow naturally in a way that honors you. In Jesus' name, amen. And that's what I'm saying, that personal, real strong personal relationship with him. Get it. You can definitely get it. I definitely have a personal relationship with him. There are times I feel him holding me, hugging me, getting me through the hard times, like with my family going through that hard time. 
We got through it. We all got through it because we trusted God. Sure, a little time, you know, there was times I had that fear, but, it, you know, I just had to keep praying and get closer to Jesus and just say, Jesus, be with me. I'm scared during this time. And he sure was. So get that personal relationship with him. Start your day, go through your day, and end your day with this book, The Holy Bible, Life's Manual. Best book you'll ever read. It'll teach you exactly how to live. No media, like I always say, no dictionary, no newspaper, no television show on it or anything, the newscast, any of it. Nothing will teach you more than right here will. This was predicted and, and everything in here is everything we need to know how to live, how to live that good Christian life so that when we leave this world, we go to heaven, we walk streets of gold and we live a good life. But don't just skim by by the skin of your teeth let's try to do as much as we can for the lord you know teaching his good word like i do here telling everybody about god really really you know what you teach also do you know like if i tell you to read the scriptures i read them so if, if you know if, if you're telling people to read them really read them and you guys can see i've showed you before all of my bookmarks all of my marking ups in my bible i read the scriptures I never was one that really did, and I'll be honest, I just listened to other people read it. I uh, one time had listened to it on disc all the way through. Of course, you know, I was doing well as Tanny, some of it I missed, some of it I didn't. But now I have done tons of reading, and I plan to start the first of the year to bring, you know, read the whole entire Bible again. That's what I want to do. But I, of course, I spend that alone time, and I just pick up good scriptures and read them and mark them. And I'm always doing a Proverbs a day. There's 31 Proverbs, which means for the 31 days of the month or 30 days, you read a Proverbs a day. It's the wisdom chapter, okay? Read one a day to match the day of the week and then start over. If there's only 28 days, we'll read 28 and start over. If there's 30, read 30. If there's 31, like this month, there's 31. Read all 31 and then start over again. And just keep doing it. It's the wisdom chapter. Definitely the wisdom chapter. So get your Bible, guys, and get close to God. Definitely get close to him. Get that personal, personal relationship with Jesus. He loves that. So anyways, now let's go on to our meal here. We're going to try this. And then I'll tell you guys a story. All right. So, like I said, it is noodles. It is a cold shrimp cocktail. It is detailed, deshelled everything. I got them from Walmart. So, they're already cooked because they're the, the cooked cocktail shrimp. And it's got the green onion in it. And then, of course, the cocktail sauce. So, let me show you that. See if you can get a good look at that. I could probably stand up here. But, you know, I always got to move this table forward a little bit. Because otherwise, I slip. My socks slip. But look at that. Doesn't that look delicious, you guys, with the shrimp cocktail? A nice cold dish. Maybe not great for here in Minnesota because it's cold here in Minnesota. But I wanted this so bad. So, mmm, mmm, mmm. Oh, that is good. I mean, you don't have to do just, you know, cold shrimp dipped in a cocktail sauce. Why not add noodles to it? Make it up. Shrimp cocktail noodle dish. Mm, mm, mm. Yum, this is good. Mm, I love shrimp. Huge shrimp lover. I love it cold, I love it hot. I love it all different ways. But wow, this is really good with that cocktail sauce. My husband wasn't sure if he was going to like it. He goes, well, can't we just do the shrimp just dipped in it? I said, why, why wouldn't it be good on the noodles? He goes, yeah, you're right. Let's try it on the noodles. So these are the shirataki noodles, which are Okay to have on keto. They're like a protein noodle. A lot of vegans eat this too. So if you're vegan, you can have that. Let's try a cucumber. Oops. I peel my cucumbers because they are less carb then. I peel them and um, uh, salt and pepper and a uh, little bit of ranch. I'm using just a serving of ranch. Mmm. Love cucumbers. And that's why I did the... Um, MCT, I always do MCT in my coffee, especially days like this, because we need, you know, I want to make sure I get my fat and my calories in because it's only one meal. If you go below one day, it ain't going to hurt you. But um, I do really try hard to do 15 to 1800 calories, which is perfect for me at five foot two and a half, five foot three. We'll just say I'm five three, range of, you know, right around there. Um, and uh, at about 135 pounds. So that's perfect. My doctor told me 1500 calories is perfect. And I do between 15 and 18. So, and like I said, I don't do these often. I know you guys seen that treat video I did, but remember, all my videos are pre-recorded. This is the only one that I do that's always on the day that you're getting it. But the treat one I did, um, 
was, um, you know, all those are like pre-recorded videos. I don't eat these often. Once in a while, you might see me eat one and then maybe a couple of days later, you know, in a video, see it again. That's very rare. It's only because I didn't have a lot of things in the house to throw together to get enough fat in. But I'm maintenance, so it doesn't really matter. But it is a dirtier keto. I don't like to do too dirty of keto. I like to try to keep it as, you know, as clean keto as possible. But once in a while, I do those. But if you are in maintenance, you could eat those all the time. Lots of people do dirty and lazy keto. I just like to stay, you know, as clean eating as possible. So I'm going to have one of my string cheese. I love string cheese. And I, I love to peel it. Sometimes I'll just eat it whole. But I love peeling it. I remember as a kid, we used to do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, I love string cheese. So, I am happy to be back in, like I said, and just happy to do these videos with you guys, bring in all these new recipes all the time. Definitely try all these recipes out. Like I always say, in the uh, slideshow video, make this recipe or one of mine and come and join me. Sit down and eat with me. Because I always open it up between five and six. At least I try to. Sometimes I forget because it's already ready to go. I just sometimes forget and realize, oh my gosh, it's past six o'clock. I got to get it open. I'll try to remember. So, all right, we're going to tell a story. I'm trying to debate on which one I want to tell you. They're both funny stories. All right, I'll tell you another embarrassing story about me. <laughs> All right. When I met my husband, I met him back in um, 2011. We got married in 2012. But anyways, when I met him... Um, and he started to meet some of my family members. My uncle was real good to embarrass me all the time. And he told my husband, he goes, um, so how do you like being with a woman that farts all the time? And Phelan's like, what are you talking about? I haven't heard her fart. And we had only been together a few weeks, me and Phelan. And I'm looking at my uncle like, what are you doing? You know, embarrassing me. He's like, no, she wouldn't do that or whatever. Well, Years ago, I had my gallbladder taken out. Um, it was after I had my kid. At the age of 23, I had my gallbladder taken out. And because I had a really bad gallbladder. So, of course, the bad foods I ate and everything, you know, you get more gassy and stuff because you don't have a gallbladder or whatever. So I was more gassier. But, of course, I had just met Phelan, so he wasn't going to see that side of me yet. And my uncle had to go and say that. Um, it was funny when Phelan had said, no. He was like, I've never heard her do that. Whatever, no way. You guys are just kidding around. Not that he had never heard a girl fart, but he just, the way my uncle was saying, he goes, it's like all day long. <laughs> and, you know, just, she just never stops or whatever. Well, that was me. I had a very, sorry, gassy tummy. And if you held them, they hurt because I had my gallbladder removed. Well, after my, excuse me. After my uncle said that, I think one time it slipped out or something with him. Maybe a week later or something, it slipped out. Well, we both laughed about it. I was embarrassed and everything, but he took it pretty well. <laughs> and after you're with somebody, I mean, I told you the story. Uh, my husband and I met. Four days later, he moved in. A month later, we were engaged. A year later, we were married. And we've been together now 10 years. So we were a fast relationship. We were already living together. So it was kind of hard to hold those, you know? <laughs> But finally, when he heard after that, I just kind of let him go then. Just always was like, I'm glad I didn't care anymore. And he went to my uncle one day. He goes, you weren't kidding. He was like, it's all the time. But, you know, what, what do you do when you have a gallbladder missing and you get them? I mean, they can't hold them every second. And I had so much gas all the time. But I ate really bad. Okay. I obviously was 300 pounds. I ate really bad. Bad foods for somebody that didn't have a gallbladder. And... 
one night we're in bed and we had went to bed or whatever and um, we're laying there and I was really gassy. Now this was, like I said, way before keto because since doing keto, I'm not gassy at all. I never get gas now, ever. So it just proves even though I'm eating a higher fat diet, because I'm eating a healthier way of life, I don't get the gas now. Unless I eat too much alcohol sugar, like this won't really do it. But if you eat, too, because my body, you know, even though I don't do them often, if I was to do like this and maybe like a cookie or something else, yeah, then I'll get a little bit of gas from just the alcohol sugar itself. I do get a little bit of gas because I'm not used to eating them. If a lot of people eat them all the time, they don't get gassy. They do at first till they get used to them. But this little bit could make me a little gassy because I don't eat them that often. But anyways, I just never do since doing keto. But during that time, yes, I did all the time. <laughs> After my husband heard him a few times, I didn't, just didn't care anymore. <laughs> but we were laying in bed one night, and I don't know what I had ate, but I had this fart. And sorry, guys, if this is, you know, too much information for you guys, but it's just funny. We all do it. We all burp. We all fart. It's part of life, right? So... But anyways, I farted and it kept going and going and going. Like there was no end to this fart. I, I, even I was amazed by it. Like it just kept going and it was so loud and so just big, especially for a girl, you know. And I don't know what it was that I had ate. But anyways, after it was all said and done, I'm laying there and I'm waiting for my husband to say something. I'm not saying anything. He's not saying anything. I didn't know if he was sleeping, but we had just laid down. And... We're as quiet as can be for a good, probably 40 seconds. I mean, that's a long time when something like that happens. Like you're like you're thinking, well, why isn't he saying anything? And all of a sudden, I heard my husband say, I'm in shock. I'm speechless. I don't even know what to say right now. <laughs> and so there's where it was funny because he didn't even know what to say. And he said, I'm a guy a dude. He said, I've been in, you know, locker rooms with the boys in high school, going to gyms and working out, been in locker rooms there. I've been in the Navy around all these guys in the showers there and everything. And he goes, I even spent a little time in jail. Not anything serious, you guys. This was, you know, nothing serious or whatever, just a ticket thing or whatever, but nothing serious. It was just a misdemeanor. <laughs> he spent a little time there or whatever, a couple days. But he goes, and even there, I didn't hear anybody do a fart like that, a guy. He goes, I've never heard a, a dude do that. He goes, that's why I was speechless, he said. And then we started laughing because, of course, it made me laugh. And we laughed and laughed and laughed. And he kept saying it. He got up to go to the bathroom. He came back in. He goes, like, I'm serious. I don't know a person in the world. And I've, I've been everywhere around the world. And I've never heard anybody do that because he was in the service, you know. And he was like, he goes, I'm jealous. He actually said he was jealous. He goes, I wish I could do that. Because, of course, guys, you know. He goes, I would give anything to be able to do that. I'm like, you would give anything to be able to do that. And we laughed and laughed and laughed. And we couldn't stop laughing for hours and hours. Like, we're trying to go to sleep. And we, I just kept thinking of it and laughing again because he just kept going, you know, going and making the noise. But he would make the noise for a long time. He kept doing that. I was laughing or whatever. And then more would slip out because I was laughing. Or whatever and he's just like I just I still I can't believe that and we talked about that all the time we'd lay down in bed and he'd go I still can't get over that I just can't because I'd have other ones that would come and they wouldn't even be close you know go no we're not even close and he goes and he tried he tried after that to get farts like that he's like what did you eat that day I mean he tried to get a fart like that like he wanted to do that I don't know I guess just being a guy or whatever but I was so embarrassed but it was one of those things that, like, you almost even couldn't be embarrassed because even I was in shock. Like, I didn't understand how this lasted so long and it was so big. Um, yeah. That we both were in shock. Like, and I'm thinking, what is he going to say something? Thought maybe he was sleeping, maybe he missed it. And I'm kind of hoping he had missed it. <laughs> You can't miss something like that. I think I would have woke him up with that. But to hear somebody say it, you know, go through the whole thing. I've been, you know, in locker rooms in school. I've been in the locker rooms at gyms. In the Navy. In jail. 
And not once have I ever heard a guy do that. A guy, he was like, I'm serious. That is unbelievable. So we just laughed and laughed. And to this day, when I think about it, I remember that night we couldn't stop laughing after we talked about that. And he started saying that that made me laugh. And the thing with me is, you know, I was a person that did that. So if I could hide it and, you know, like I would do it, I wasn't embarrassed or whatever. But I still slightly was kind of embarrassed being a woman. I still was embarrassed that it would happen. But I tried to just make it funny. But when it would smell really bad, I didn't want to take credit for it, you know. If it was a silent, like they say, the silent but deadly one, I wouldn't want to take credit for it. And so there was times that I'd be so bad and he would go, God, what is that smell or whatever? Because nobody would hear it. Well, as soon as you say that to me, I start laughing. I can't hide it. I start laughing. That's one thing about me is you can't. I can't not laugh when somebody says that if I did it. If I didn't do it, you know I didn't because I won't laugh. I hate that I can't hide it. So then you'd be like, oh my gosh, that's horrible. What did you eat? But there was a time I was able to hold this back because it was so bad. I was able to hold it back of laughing when he had said, oh my gosh, it stinks, it smells like a sewer. And I'm thinking, I am so embarrassed by that, so I am not going to laugh. I'm going to hold everything back because I don't want him to know. And as we're driving um, into our, our home, into our driveway, he's like, oh, it must be that person right there or like the sewer or something. It smells like a sewer. He goes, I think it's that person right there because that person looks dirty or whatever. I am trying my hardest not to laugh because he's blaming it on somebody else now. Like blaming it on somebody just walking down the street or whatever. He's blaming, he's like, oh, it just stings like a sewer. But I was embarrassed when he said a sewer, you know? So, yeah, he's just like, I think it's that guy right there. I don't know how I did it, how I held it in. But later on, I had to tell him the truth one day. And I, because I thought about it, it made me laugh. And then I told him, like, it was you? He was like, oh, I'm like blaming that guy walking down the road. But, yeah. But thank God, you guys, I don't have that problem anymore since doing keto. Just proves the way you eat does give you more gas. And especially if you don't have a gallbladder. You got to watch what you eat. For sure, because you will get very gassy. But I just love that. I don't have that anymore. I just don't. And I remember a few months into doing keto, my husband even said, I don't ever hear you fart anymore. Like, just out of the blue. It just happened one day, and we started laughing about it. He goes, I never hear you fart. I'm like, I know I never do anymore. He's like, that's so weird. He's like, I kind of miss it. And he's like, no, I don't miss it. <laughs> but, yeah, it's just amazing when you start eating healthier. How even that's different. I mean, they talk about that. I saw a video come up on Facebook. I talked about if your number two stinks bad enough where literally you want to leave the bathroom, that's not healthy. There's something wrong with your insides. You're not eating healthy when it becomes something so bad. You know, it smells so bad that even yourself can't handle it. That's not normal. And I don't have that at all. When I go to the bathroom, I'm not acting like my crap don't stink. Everybody does. But I'm just saying it isn't the same at all. It's different. And, you know, definitely, I definitely I can tell a difference since I started eating healthier. It's, like, completely different. Like, like the smell, everything. Like, it's not embarrassing. I don't got to spray anything when I'm done. It's just different. And even when you, when you um, like, eat bad, of course, people, like, you ever have that time where you have to use, like, almost the whole roll of toilet paper? Well, even that isn't like that for me since eating keto. You even are almost, like... Not to call myself a dog, but almost like a dog where a dog doesn't need to wipe. I wipe, but there's like never nothing there. Not, okay, again, plug your ears if it's too much information for you. But I'm just saying that is a part of life. Just like right now, I'm burping and I'm trying to hold it back. It is a part of life, okay? We all do it. But just to have such a clean, even, you know, your number two be even that clean shows how clean you eat and how good you and how healthy you are. It's amazing. So... But yeah, my brother used to call it, my brother Tommy, he's the big horror buff. Um, he used to call it a lacquer poop, <laughs> where he goes, it's lacquer, like when you wipe, there's nothing there. Because he said it just comes out, it's all lacquered, you know, it's got some kind of wax around it or something. So <laughs> he's just saying that because when you wipe, there's nothing there. And he said when he did keto, same thing. My brother Robbie, anybody that I know that does keto will say that. Will say that they, you know, that's just how it is for them. Now... My brother Robbie still has his gallbladder, but Tommy's has been removed. Mine's been removed. My mom's. Lots of family members. It was a family genetic for us. Mine happened right after my son was born. And I had my 
um, gallbladder removed and my tubes tied at the same time because I had to because of my heart condition. I was told I couldn't have any more kids. And if I was to get pregnant before I even knew I was pregnant, it would take me. That's how bad my heart was. So I had to get my tubes tied very young. That was sad. But I'm grateful that I could at least have one kid. I got to experience the whole thing. Some people out there can't have any. So I'm very grateful to God. And I have a wonderful son. He's 22 and he's got a great head on his shoulders. But he needs to control his party. He's definitely his mother. Because he doesn't eat like I do. He doesn't do keto. Well, actually right now he is doing keto. But normally he doesn't do keto. Because he works out at a gym six days a week. Two to three hours. So he can eat you know, a lot more carbs and stuff. Even though he eats healthier, a lot of times he doesn't. He's a kid. 22. But, but yeah, that's... You know, embarrassing story, but I'm just saying how your body just changes. It's so different. Like, just even going to the bathroom now is just totally different for me. So, another embarrassing story. Sorry, again, if that was too much information for some people. But, like I said, we all do it. And I just thought it's a funny story. I'll just tell you guys. Tell you guys. Because, Yeah. To be told that that's worse than even a dude, that he had never even heard a dude do that, like, that's a story you got to tell somebody. But I am a lady, and I try to be as much of a lady as I can, but I'll tell you what, when I was around him, alone, no. Never did anything like that in public, always held it. But, yeah, I just loved him so much, I guess, that it didn't embarrass me because I knew he loved me, so... And I just had bad gas because of my gallbladder being removed. But it was the foods because I eat high-fat foods now, but good fats, and I never have that problem. <laughs> so there's my funny story for you guys. <laughs> I've got just a solid color on my nails. It's a color changer, and I don't have anything to show you how it changes. Actually, let's see. I got a little bit that'll change right here just a little bit. I have pictures of it. I'll stick some pictures in to show you guys. I don't know if you can see that. See how the tips are starting to change a little bit? I don't know if you can see that. I'm trying to do something cold. Wait, this is a little bit colder. It's definitely um, uh, hot to cold, you know? So let's see if I can get them to just change just a little bit for you. You see the tips there? How they're changing to like a navy blue purple? That's what they do when you're when you're cold. They'll go completely navy blue. A purplish navy blue. And then when you're warm. Let's see if I can get it just a little bit warm for you guys. Um, and then when you go warm, it's the, the thing. There we go. I'll get up close so you can see it. See that? How it's changing? Isn't that cool? I love it. Love color changing polish. And that one was a two-tone one. So... Just having fun, like I said, because I had all these pre-recorded videos. But now I'll be getting back to my designs and, uh, you know, starting over since I got all the October ones done. You guys got the last one yesterday, my Marilyn Monroe, which is right behind me there. I don't know if you guys you probably can't see it, but you've seen it in my videos, my cleaning videos. That's my Marilyn there. And, um, yeah, so I wanted to portray her. I had so much fun doing her. I hope you guys enjoyed all of those. I loved it. I, I did such a variety. I did a 20s, the Flapper Girl. I did a uh, 30s, a gangster. I did a 70s since I was born in the 70s. Excuse me. And then I did a 50s look. So I did all different, you know, time eras. And I thought, perfect ones. I loved all of them that I did. I had a lot of fun doing them. But the gangster one was a, a real fun one for me. But I think Marilyn was my favorite. I always wanted to be Marilyn. You know, not be her, portray her, you know. That was a Halloween costume. I like being me, so... But I always wanted to do her as a Halloween costume. And I don't know why I never did. Of course, when I was heavier, I tried to portray her. I couldn't really buy a costume, so I just wore a white dress. And at 300 pounds, yeah, you're not really Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> not cutting anybody down. I'm just saying, I didn't feel as good as I did doing it this way. You know, when I did it that way, I felt a lot better doing it. Because then you can buy the costume. Because it's sad that they don't make clothes for bigger people like that. I mean, I wore a 3 to 4X. I mean... That was really hard to find a costume. And costumes are always made smaller than what they are. So, 
yeah, I couldn't get a costume big enough for me to wear it. So I just had a white dress one time, wore it, put on the wig and stuff like that, and tried to betray Marilyn or whatever, did the mole and all that. But of course, people knew who I was. I just didn't feel as pretty. But I felt gorgeous doing this last Marilyn. I have so much fun. I hope you guys got to see it. Sorry that video was longer. But like I said, that's Marilyn. We got to give her more time. <laughs> Sad that we lost her at such a young age. My husband was telling me about that today. I knew she died young, but she was only 36. If you didn't know that. All done, you guys, with that. With dinner. All right, so now we'll do our yogurt. Hope you guys enjoyed that embarrassing story. <laughs> you know, I think as we get older, though, it'll be a, oh, wait, I want to mix my nuts in a little bit here first. My pecans. I've got a raspberry. I'm, I'm, I am uh, going to show you guys. I'll do it in a, in a different video or whatever, probably a treat video. My husband got me these other yogurts that are called keto yogurts. It actually says the word keto on them. And they're really thick and really delicious. I love them. I'll show them to you guys. But um, the sugar on it, I think, is circulose. So I don't even think it's done with the aspirin, with the, um, the stevia or anything. I'll have to look at it again. I'm not sure. So, And I don't do a lot of circulose, but you can. People have. I did in the beginning. But it is really a good yogurt. It's really thick. It's even thicker than these yogurts. These are Greek. Even thicker than them. And I, I really like it. So I'll show it to you guys sometime. Definitely, you know, try them. Test them, though, and make sure you stay in keto. I'll read the ingredients to you guys and stuff like that. Because I'm in maintenance, I try different things. But... Really good yogurts. I still highly recommend these, though. Because these ones are done with the stevia. So, much better yogurt to have. Mmm, so yummy. Always love these with the nuts. My good friend Monica um, had her friend over, Veronica. Monica from Team Dave and Mon. I'm sure you guys have heard about her. I'm sure you guys, a lot of you came over from her channel or from me telling you about it, went over and seen her. Her good friend Veronica came to see her from Massachusetts. Um, Monica lives in Miami. She went to visit her. And those those have been fun to watch. Watch those videos. She got to see her bestie. She met her five years ago. I think it was over five years ago. And I've known Monica for like four years. I'm going to go meet her, hopefully in uh, the springtime of next year. I can't wait to meet her, man. I want to wrap my arms around her and hug her. She's definitely my bestie. And I want to meet my best girl, Jennifer. I want to meet her, too. I forget where she lives. Where's she from? What? Where's Jennifer from? Louisiana. Oh, I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Louisiana. Sorry, Jennifer. I knew you were where you were from, but I just drew a blank. I had a brain fart. I still get those. I still do get brain farts. Not as much doing keto. <laughs> But that'd be the only farts I get. But I want to meet her. I don't know if she's going to come to me first or we're going to go to them. I hope she comes to me. We've taken vacations and stuff like that. It's just a little harder for us right now financially and stuff like that. So hopefully we can, we can do it or whatever. But, oh, I would love if Jennifer would just... She said spur of the moment she wants to just get in the car and come. Girl, you need to. Come see me. I would love to meet you all. I need some joy in my life. A lot of, you know, hard times with this COVID. But you know I'm healthy. You know I stay healthy. I stay away from a lot of people and stuff like that. So you know I'm healthy. Just get in that car, girl, and come see me. Come see how beautiful our winter is before it gets too bad. Or if not, hopefully after, you know, when the spring hits. But yeah, I'd love to meet you all. And I would love for you, I want to, see, you know, come to where you are. But I really want you to come to Minnesota here. I want you to see how beautiful it is here. And I would like you, you know, I mean, I don't want you to have to be here in the cold, but it's so pretty. I want you to see that. So, um, you just get a spur of the moment. You want to come see, and you'll come see me. 
But like I said, Monica, I'm definitely going to try for the springtime. Monica, if you're watching this, I'm going to try for the springtime to come see you. I can't wait to wrap my arms around her. I have helped that girl from day one with the ketogenic diet. I helped her. She lost all of her weight in 18 months, over 150 plus pounds, and has kept it off too. She's um, over three years keto. So here's my Reese's peanut butter cup. I love these. Mm. They taste just like a Reese's peanut butter cup. There's no difference. That's so weird. They're not like the Slim Fast peanut butter cups at all. Not at all. Because those are fat bombs. These are peanut butter cups. And I did have a few people that don't do keto try these and they said, I mean, they just said, tell me which one is real and which one's not. They couldn't tell the difference. I actually tricked them. I had one Reese's, one of this. I put it in their hand. We tried them. They couldn't tell the difference. I had them just close their eyes in case. Because I think this one is a little bit darker in color. Maybe it's not. I can't remember. But I had them close their eyes and they could not tell the difference. So, I'm telling you guys. They are good. You gotta try them. Oh my god, they're so good. Mm, mm, mm. How far am I? Oh, I always do these videos so long. All right, I'm going to get off here. I just make these videos too long. I don't know how they end up so long. They are an eating show, though. Eating show, though. I mean, some people can do them and they just eat so fast. I just can't eat fast. I just can't. You're supposed to eat slow anyways. And I want to enjoy when it's only one meal that I get. I want to enjoy it. So, anyways, like one more drink. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, if you need any help, my email's linked down below. I'd love to help you. I hope all of you guys are staying safe, happy, and healthy, leaning on Jesus, trusting him, keeping that faith. You know, this is not a time of fear. I told you I did fear, but whenever I did, I drew closer to him. That's what you want, just keep drawing closer to him. I don't want to be a hypocrite. I did get scared. We're all going to get scared in fear. But we can lean on him, ask for his help, and he will help us to get through it and to, you know, fear not. So try not to fear. This isn't a time of fear. Love your life. You know, live each day. God says, I give you just today, so live for just today. Did you thank him for waking you up today? Thank him for waking you up, you guys. Thank him. And send that a quality quality alone time with him. Other than that, I will continue to pray for each and every one of you. I always do, and I promise you that on a Bible. I do. I pray for all of you. Please continue to pray for me. Everybody take care. God bless, and I'll see each and every one of you in my very next upload.